lessons. Ready for the practice track now. Here goes. Wow. Uh, you know what? Keep going. Plow through. It's good enough. Fix it in post. Yeah. You're ready for the practice track now. Here goes. Okay. Oh, wow.
You're ready for the practice track now. Here goes. Flawless performance. It's uh, day four of 60 day Rocksmith challenge. I have missed yesterday. I've missed day four. Day five is today. Um, so uh, the the commitment that I've made is uh, uh, at least one hour per day for 60 days. <clears throat> and so since I've missed yesterday, I intend to make it up today. So today is going to be a, a longer session, at least two hours. I haven't, I didn't play with Rocksmith yesterday at all. Um, so um, I, I've noticed that I was much better at the uh, three or four lessons, Ben's, Legato, Tremolo, and what was the chords? Um, I've noticed that I'm much better at it today than I was two days ago. And like I said, I didn't practice uh, uh, with Rocksmith yesterday at all. And uh, um, I didn't practice these techniques uh, at all. So <clears throat> it was merely uh, sort of time uh, uh, and the mind and the muscles getting accustomed to, you know, things like... Oh. Anyways. So today I'm going to make up for it with an extra long session. It's Sunday, so... Um, And this is basically the first thing today that I'm doing, second, thing. third. Um, so there's still plenty of daylight left. Uh, I'm going to put in a nice long session today. And um, in thinking about uh, the game and thinking about my approach to the game uh, and what I want to do with it uh, and the strategy for learning a better guitar, <clears throat> Um, after going through a few of these lessons, I've realized that they are not optional. They are the thing that I've been seeking. Um, they are the thing that uh, helps you understand the language of Rocksmith, the visual language of Rocksmith. So going through these things is not going to teach you the names of techniques, which is important when you're having a conversation with another guitar player, let's say. Um, 
so that you guys are on the same page. I can't tell you how many times people must have said tremolo to me, and I assume they meant like a whammy bar, right? Um, I don't know if everybody confuses those two, but I know I have. Uh, and, you know, for 30 plus years. So, um, yeah, shame on me, but also, like, no one noticed or said anything. So, <laughs> um, you know, something like, <clears throat> even something like bends. I'm not accustomed to saying bends because you don't say it as, was that a noun like that? Like, um, uh, you say it as a verb. Uh, when you're uh, having a conversation, Could you not say it's always something like you're you bend the string no s or bending the string. Um, let's say you don't necessarily use it in past tense bent, you know. Uh, so it's funny. So even like something like bends, I'm not accustomed to uh, seeing it standalone like that. So. It was just a nice way to connect the technique with the language, with the proper name, uh, and uh, well, and then learn the visual language. And when I said language earlier, I meant English language. Uh, but now I'm talking about the visual and language of Roxman. Uh, it all sorts of sort of brings it together. So <clears throat> I have about a couple of weeks before my um, real setup arrives, um, PS4. Um, so right now I'm playing it on my computer. Uh, and, um, and so I've, I've been asking myself what my approach should be for these first two weeks. Um, and I think my approach is going to be not so much to focus on the songs. If I put in two sessions per day, which I intend to do, um, the second session will be playing a song. Uh, but if I put in just one session, uh, I, I need to go through these lessons. I think that's, it's like learn how to crawl before you learn to walk kind of thing. And so there's lots of good stuff in here and uh, I should know it. So I'm going to go through these uh, and I'm going to basically focus on going through this stuff primarily over the next two weeks. Um, once the, my uh, real rig arrives, I'll, um, you know, not only will I then know the language of the interface, um, but I can then throw myself into the songs and not worry about the latency so much um, and all of those other things. So, uh, in any case, I wish... I mentioned this in my day three video, and um, I, I, I think it and believe it now more than I did two days ago. Um, I, um, I wish a video like this existed before I purchased Rocksmith. Actually, not even before I purchased Rocksmith, because uh, as basically as soon as I found out what Rocksmith is, and shame on me for not finding out earlier, they came out in 2011. Right, 2011. In my defense, I started my own business in 2011, and for like five years, I was just doing that. So I completely missed Rocksmith. Um, and again, 2014, I was still running my business. I didn't. Uh, I was not uh, paying attention to anything guitar-related, really, um, and nothing gaming-related. So you know. Um, it all missed me, but as soon as I found out what Rocksmith is, um, I ordered myself a copy, and I actually purchased it on Amazon for my Mac, uh, but then ended up running it from Steam and purchasing it there, um, and now I'm going to run it on PlayStation, I'm going to buy another copy. Uh, it's, um, you know, I'm not uh, easily one to buy software. But uh, software like this, I have no problem with it, man. It, it teaches you a real-life skill, you know? Um, playing guitar is everything. So um, any sort of game that uh, connects to a, 
a real thing, like a real instrument, piano, drums. Uh, I just think it's uh, it's really cool. It's a really cool category of games, and I'm interested in exploring more of them. But for now, uh, I'll do Rocksmith. Um, and um, yeah, so let's just get into these rest of the lessons. Like I said, today's going to be an extra long session, so we're going to get through a few of these lessons. And um, and if you've ordered uh, Rocksmith and you want to sort of get a head start um, on these lessons and learning the visual language of the uh, application, then you can follow along with me here. Let's get going on palm mutes. Touch the strings close to the bridge with the edge of your hand to mute them a little bit. Try it at your own pace. Yeah, that was good. Usually mm. you'll get several palm mutes in a row, so let's try repeating it a few times. You see the X? Now your turn. Nice. X means now palm mute. Riff built out of palm mutes. Here's the riff again. Listen to it, then play it. Play it now. Let's try that again. Okay. Let's check out another palm mute riff. Here's that riff again, but let's just listen to it. You can play after that. Music making right there. <laughs> Here's a riff that shifts back and forth between palm mutes and regular notes. Just lift up your hand when the regular notes come along. Here's the riff again. Listen to it, then play it. <laughs> Let's try that again. Yeah, let's. Ah. Here's that riff again. Yeah. What? Let's try it again, a little slower. Try that again. What? This sounded a lot easier to play when 
the guitar was just playing it. Here's that riff again. <clears throat> so let's let's I think it was uh yeah. Let's check out another palm mute riff. Listen to this riff one more time before you play it. Now your turn. Another thing I meant to do is set a timer for these lessons. I want to spend at least 20 minute, 20 minutes on each. that riff again. Let's slow that down, Ben. Build up your speed. Let's try that again. faster. Here's that riff again. Now let's try that at full speed. Job. Here's a riff that shifts back and forth between palm mutes and regular notes. Just lift up your hand when the regular notes come along. Try that again. Here's that riff again. Let's slow that down and then build up your speed. Slow it down for a minute. Let's try that a little slower and then build up your speed. Let's slow it down for a minute. Slow it down for a minute. Let's slow it down for a minute. Okay, now let's put it all together in a song. Here goes.
god, this is fun. What? Oh, this is this is what I needed to get accustomed to following the notes because I've never heard this song. In order for me to play anything like this, I need to know it in my brain. You know, I need to memorize it. Otherwise, I can't play it. And when I say memorize, I don't mean uh, memorize how to play it. That part's actually easy. Uh, memorize the melody, know the melody. So I think I'm going to sit this one out and let him uh, replay it, maybe even slow it down. I love that Rocksmith does that. Awesome song, you guys. Well, let's, let's take that lesson again. <laughs> That's okay, man. It's all good. Let's go to school uh, on this one again. Now, let's get going on Paul Mutes. Touch the strings close to the bridge with the edge of your hand. Okay, I think we got that. Now, here's a riff built out of Paul Mutes. Here's that riff again, but let's just listen to it. You can play after that. Play it now. That was pretty sweet. I feel like I was hitting it four times. Let's check out another palm mute riff. Here's the riff again. Listen to it, then play it. Oh, it would be amazing if this was completely interactive. Like, play it again, Sam. Here's a riff that shifts back and forth between palm mutes and regular notes. Just lift up your hand when the regular notes come along. Great job. You're ready to apply this to a practice track now. Here goes. Let's, can we slow that down? Jeez.
can we slow that down? Hang on. <clears throat> Disappointing performance. You telling me? Uh, let's go to practice track. And we're going to use Rift Repeater. And we're going to slow it down to, let's say, 80%. And let's try it like that. It's got a few surprising twists and turns. Let's listen to it. listen to this a couple of times and observe uh, the notes being played.
I love Rip Repeater. At 100%, I found um, that my hand is getting tired. Uh, my hand never gets tired, but I don't play these downstrokes that much. This is not my style of music exactly. One of the reasons uh, why I like Rocksmith is it's been exposing me to all sorts of different styles of music. Um, I knew about half the songs uh, from the default list, about 55 uh, songs total. I knew about half, the other half didn't really know. Uh, so, so it's been a kind of a discovery journey as well. This is a interesting kind of music. I think it's been a um, long enough time to be able to reflect and say that this type of music, whilst requiring a certain amount of skill, and is, you know, very musical, uh, it lacks the ability to impress chicks, let's say. Um, well, but then again, they come in all sorts. All the ones I come across. You gotta know how to put a few chords together and sing a melody. God forbid, harmonize. Third, sixth, fourth, fifth, second, fifth, third, sixth. So third, sixth. Okay, so it's it's spanning the second and sixth fret, roughly speaking. So if you put your hand somewhere with your pointer finger on the second or third fret, then your four fingers, middle, the one next to the middle finger and the pinky, what's, oh, ring finger, I guess, right? So those four will span the four frets between the second, third fret and like the fifth, sixth fret. And that should require very little hand movement, just by one fret depending on what section you're playing. Oh, there's 20 minute timer. It's okay, timer. We're gonna spend more time on this song.
Nice. Okay, so let's now try to play it. We also know that there's 440 notes in here, so that's nice. Oh, okay. All right, so that advice was good.
Ah. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm getting it. Okay.
Okay, important note here. <clears throat> it's okay um, to ignore the palm mutes when learning uh, a song. In fact, that can be a more generalized and uh, globally abstracted rule. Um, there's a, there's a layer of techniques that exists beyond the notes. Things that are that are subtle. Uh, when you mute the string, how you hit the string. Um, what else? Well, everything, how you bend it, how you pinch it, right? Right, that's... hitting it roughly the same uh, uh, way, roughly in the same spot. Comes out a little different, right? Different spot, same note. You got another different spot, but I'm picking it, same note. So uh, there's a lot of subtlety that goes or <laughs> right? Um, all of that subtlety is important later. Um, there's a whole, just a plethora of techniques um, that fit into learn it later, when later, after your muscles um, have gotten accustomed, your finger muscles have gotten accustomed to playing the notes, and the notes are firmly lodged in your memory, you won't be able to help yourself, but you start applying some uh, more advanced techniques. Um, so as I'm going through this, I am largely ignoring palm mutes. Uh, palm mutes are, you know, like that, right? Um, once I know the song, when to apply uh, palm or not is sort of just happens second nature um, from practicing the riff so much and too many times wrong the wrong way right so oh, oh that's it's ringing too much i mean not bad but ringing too much this is that's too much that's too much pop So, so note to myself, note to you. Skip the subtleties whilst learning the melodies, <laughs> uh, and and focus on the notes. Focus on muscle memory. Focus on understanding it mathematically. Let's say, right, uh, and then apply the art on top of it. Well, at least that's what works for me. Right on for size. It is day four. 
basically interacts with. And on day one, I mentioned uh, that When a player is really good, you know, the Gladwell's 10,000 hours kind of thing. There's a relationship between the visual cues on the game, on the screen, um, and the player that uh, there's no separation that air that exists normally between the uh, computer screen and the eyeballs of the player, that's only visible to us, but to the player, uh, that, that, you know, a foot or two feet of air between the computer screen and the eyeballs of the player, they don't exist for the player. The player is the game and the game is the player. Uh, they are one and the same. Um, and I think um, I, I glimpsed that possibility on day two. Um, and now I'm starting to, uh, you, this is day five, um, I'm starting to glimpse it more often. And that's good. It's really good. Um, but I still am cognizant of the fact that I don't have it. It's, I'm nowhere near there, but, uh, but it's getting there. for a second. I'm going to refill all the coffee. Don't forget to hydrate. Should take the entire dose. You have the advantage and the ability to pause these videos uh, and repeat them. That's okay. So, note to self, I should probably uh, make some videos later that um, 
they're more directed at your learning needs rather than mine. Though I'm not sure what that looks like right now. Good, solid note. Let's listen to it one more time. Ah, I was wondering where the fourth note was. Because um, I kept seeing those three, and of course the fourth note is in the previous bar, in the previous notes. Right? So. Well, can't count when I play. Wow, that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. so the note, the, the first... Uh, beat is on E, I think. Anyways, well, I just noticed that that's, that's a thing, so let's now see what's what. my kind of music.
difficulty is knowing when to rely on what. Because as I'm going through this, I'm, I'm going to uh, what I know, which is just playing from memory, so to speak. If I know the melody, I can play from memory. Um, but like I've never heard this riff before. I don't know this song and, and these uh, uh, time. Like, like it's a really weird time to change a note, bro. <laughs> Anyways, um, so knowing when to rely on what, um, I so there's what what can we rely on? So we can rely on the screen, um, but you can't solely rely on the screen course your playing has to work without the screen right so um, so there's a question of what remains after the screen and I'm happy to report that what remains is you knowing how to play a song so like for example I've been um, uh, working on machine head <laughs> I say working on, I mean playing along with Roxman. Um, any case, um, I, I, I know how to play that song now. Um, I can get up with any band uh, uh, right now and play that song and muddle my way through it. And no one's the wise. No one's going to be the wiser. Um, uh, it'll be good enough for any occasion. <laughs> I've found a new levels of appreciation for that song and consequently that band, uh, which didn't exist before. It was absolutely 100% put there by Rocksmith. And, um, and so, um, where does Machine Head come from when I'm not plugged into Rocksmith? And the answer is from my memory. Um, now you start building up that memory muscle as soon as you start hearing the song. Uh, and so uh, that's where it comes from. Uh, that's the fa RAM, right? Random access memory, RAM, like a computer. It's the fastest way to retrieve the information, shortest uh, uh, path between uh, what you need to know and what you know. It's right there inside you. Why retrieve it visually from the screen, you see? So you got to be cognizant of that. Um, okay. Let's give it another go.
reason it's weird is because it has to be weird. Because uh, if I am Rocksmith, my aim is to get you uh, to connect your finger muscles to your visual cortex, across your visual cortex, into the uh, decision-making engine of the uh, video game as expressed through its visual content. Um, so they want to... So it's the same, like the, those chords earlier, right? It was like E major, and then they have you go to E minor from E major, and then to like E7. And it's not even the right E7. Like E7, the right E7 is, it's got that, uh, uh, um, uh, it's got, uh, is that a D note, right? D on uh, uh, second string, on the B string. Right? Like when you're playing. That's a pretty E7. This E7? It's, it's... It's the one they show in earlier, where you just cover a B note on the fifth string. It's fine, but it's not this. Right? Um, so here's an example. Games changes and fears. Where will they go from here? Um, Macy Gray didn't do. Games, changes, and fears. Where will they go from here? You know, I'd be lying if I didn't say that doesn't sound sweet. That sounds pretty sweet. Um, but I don't know, somehow this is sweet. I, uh, you know what? I'm being uh, ridiculous. Uh, they're both great chords. But the point is that uh, they've made subtle uh, changes to the chords you were making, from E major to E minor to E7. Uh, these are very subtle changes, and uh, there's a handful of songs that goes from like E minor to E major, or the other way around, you know? Um, I... I, I, I couple of songs come to mind, but I can't recall the part where they change. It doesn't matter. Um, the reason they do that is because they want to make sure that uh, they can properly detect the signal that's coming through the guitar, through the cable. Um, uh, so that you, both you and the game are capable of distinguishing and agreeing what it means to play E, E minor, 7, Because you could play it like this. Let's see, mine, E major, and then. To you, that might sound fine, right? But to the game, it knows that you're, you've done this. That's not supposed to sound that way. Unless you want it to sound, right? And that's me, essentially, on the G string, first fret, barely pressing it. So, you know, A in E major, you want to make sure that's pressed all the way, so it sounds like this. And in E minor, it needs to be this. Right? You, you'll have a fine E minor without that note. That's a fine E minor. But both you and Rocksmith need to agree that uh, you want to do that intentionally, not unintentionally. And at the start, you're doing it unintentionally, so that needs to be heard. Anyway, let's go through the riff again.
Hmm, you can. One more time? Probably.
I think it's enough of this one. Let's move on to the next lesson and set a timer for 20 minutes. How do I escape? Harmonics. Oh, that's cool. I love harmonics. sound you can make with your guitar is a harmonic. You get this sort of bell-like tone by lightly touching the string right over the fret wire. Don't press down. Your finger just kind of hovers, barely making contact. Then, after you pick the note... I have a great harmonics uh, lullaby that uh, I figured out when I was a kid. Uh, it was a little... I, I was I was at somebody's house overnight and they had one of those old timey windy uh, little music boxes that we played this melody and it's entirely played on harmonics which I did. So now that I've ranted one more time, let's do it one more time. Well, that's all played between fifth and third fret. Uh, there's some unusual places from which uh, you get these harmonics and uh, a lot of it is implied rather than an actual harmonic because this is a natural harmonic and well this one's not unnatural right 
but you notice how it's less this one less ringy right but there's one in between that's a you can hear a lot more string popping than a harmonic in that one right and that's a note right in between fourth fret on a D string Now you try it. All right. Excellent. Harmonics only work at certain points on the fretboard. Right. The most common are the 12th, 7th, and 5th frets. Here's one at the 7th. Oh, sorry. Some nice. <laughs> All right. Let's see how you might use these harmonics in a riff. Let's do it. Riff one more time before you play it. All right. Play it now. Ready to apply this to a practice track now. Here goes. performance oh you're telling me I blame myself
So we're going to put it on roof repeater now. And space. Refine the length. Speed. Let's slow it down a little bit at 80. And let's speed repeat tolerance and speed incremental animation. Rewind animation is cool, but this is an example of something that I'm going to disable between, well, sometime soon and two weeks from now. Um, I've, uh, uh, I'm, I'm using my work laptop for this, and uh, it's been performing admirably, but uh, it's choking. And so um, I have a new system coming in uh, dedicated for Rocksmith. Uh, but until then, I figured it would be a good thing to explore the No Frills version of Rocksmith. So all of these animations like the speakers blaring and the audience cheering and the rewind, etc. At some point soon, I'm going to disable all that stuff to see if the game and the um, screen, visual, and audio uh, delay type issues um, are to blame for any of the sort of um, disconnect between me and the game, so. But not now. For now, let's just uh, practice selection. It's easier.
Notice how uh, harmonics have uh, different, it's not an X, it's like a target. So this is the visual language of the platform. Those are regular notes. I, I missed that the first time.
one more time at uh, this and then we'll try regular speed. Let's set the speed to normal and see how we do.
section, it, um, the number of uh, strokes uh, increases, doubles. I wasn't ready for that. Kind of loves. Let's practice good hygiene here and let's grab that one section, I think maybe it's here or the next one, I'm not sure, and um, well actually I want to grab the section leading up to it and then that section. So let's do all three of these. Um, that way, I get the pattern, it's like... I think that's the pattern, but this will certainly help us practice those selections. So let's see that. We had the right section there. Let's do the one leading up to it. Here we go.
weakest section becomes the strongest section. So let's now uh, go through it all the way. Oops. on the clock and just practice this. So in 20 minutes we'll probably get to practice about 15 times.
Notice how that middle section is no longer a problem. It's because you spend time on it. I'm starting to miss on purpose. Try something new in that middle section. Let me try something. Could isolate it, but I don't want to. I want to go through. Uh, five minutes. Have about five minutes left. Looks like twenty minutes. So let's do twenty minutes.
time for maybe like two more reps. It's all about the reps. Still have over a minute on the clock, so. Let's do one more round. harmonics adieu and so we've gone through harmonics harmonics and so we get into Ben's 102 because I figured um, uh, three sections three lessons per session per one of these sessions um, is a good number of lessons and then of course each session uh, should do a review uh, of um, the previous lessons. I'll run through. It right? shouldn't take too long. Maybe one time uh, running through all of it. Uh, yeah, and that would be a really good way to learn the nature of calligers that is used by rocksmiths. 
Sometimes you might want to do a really big bend. Oh, for sure. Here's one that goes up three half steps. Get out of here. Oh, that's Barracuda. <laughs> Try it now. Yeah, that was good. Here's a riff with that supersized bend. One more time before you play it. I don't need to, man. <laughs> okay, you play now. Whoops. That was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Is that it? That that's all there is. All right, we can do it. I got this left. I just, I guess. I mean, that was you know, that was. You won't get very far playing rock guitar without learning power chords. Amen. Power chords on electric guitar are one of the cornerstones of the rock sound. Luckily, they're not too hard to do, and there's just one main shape to learn. So why don't we just dive in? Let's do it. Here's a basic power chord. Let's go ahead and give that a shot. G sharp, right really? Perfect. Oh, A flat, sorry. <laughs> Let's try one built off the A string. This one, you'll need to mute the low E string with a tip of the first Nato, finger. man, just grab that G. It's right there. That's like. You try it. Great job. Putting those two power chords together. Oh no. Cool, so I get okay, to learn these chugga now. chugga lines. That was almost too perfect. Whoa. Using that same basic power chord shape, you can add one more note to get a slightly beefier sound. Yeah, man, that's what I was saying. Still making that same C power chord shape. Add your pinky to They're the fifth fret of the G higher, string. Though. Yeah. This is an octave higher than the low note of the chord, so it just kind of reinforces that. Gotta get that low note, man. Gotta get that bass. It's all about that bass. Let's try that. Where are we? Excellent. <laughs> when the lowest note of the power chord is on an open string, you don't have to worry about fingering that one. Eesh. But I'd like to. Try it at your own pace. Keep the low E open and play the second fret on both the E and D strings. Perfect. I wasn't hitting too hard. Too Here's fast. a riff that combines some of these power chords. You can alternate strumming up and down, or just use all downstrokes if you want a more aggressive feel. I totally. I'm all about aggression. Listen to this riff one more time before you play it. Let's 
try that again. Here's that riff again. Let's slow that down and then build up your speed. Let's try that again. Here's that riff again. Give that another shot. All right. Let's try that again. Let's do it. that riff again. Let's give that another shot. Mm -hmm. Try that again. <coughs> Here's that riff again. What am I missing? Give that another shot. Oh, wait. wait. Let's try that again. All right. Okay, I think I'm connecting what I'm supposed to do with the visual interface. Good, now a little faster. Give that another shot. Let's play it at full speed now. Let's try that again. that riff again. Ah, all of those need to light up.
Perfect. Mm. Can we do it again, though? You're ready to apply this to a practice track now. Sure. Here goes. All right. What? What? Where? Oh, okay. Notch performance. Eh. Let's, Let's go, go to practice, practice track. Put this on riff repeater and practice a little bit, shall we? Do 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 I get what's happening here. Let's try it again. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that was awesome. Let's do it again. This time properly.
Alright. Let's do it one more time. Try have a little fun with it. Let's do this one properly. <clears throat> song I like uh, music by Rocksmith I think uh, there's any point in continuing this. Double stops. I'm not sure how long we've been at this. Um, let's jump into double stops, see how far we get. But I think we've put in an honest day's work here already. Oh, I hear you, man. That's what you call a double stop? That's what a double stop is. <laughs> at a time. Get out of here, man. For this, I thought, thought for sure double, double stop would mean something to do with the beat, the rhythm of it all. Double stop. You mean that mandolin shit? Mediterranean? Uh, whatever the fuck? Okay. Come on, man. Double stops. Change the name. Change the name. <laughs> it's fine. I'm just playing. This one, you use one finger to hold down two strings. You'll still have to pick through both of them. Try it at your own pace. Mm -hmm. 
Amazing. <laughs> Here's another double stop. This time you're going to use two fingers to play on different frets. Whoa. Be sure that your third finger doesn't accidentally mute the other string. Now you try it. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. Here's a riff that uses some of those double stops. Listen to this riff one more time before you play it. Okay, I like. Try playing it now. I like how Rocksmith. Combines. Very, Very simple, simple notes. notes. Let's try that again. You know, this is all easy stuff. Um, but we have the drums there. And I've been trying to sync up with drums. But due to the delay issues, it's been a little difficult. Um, and also, I don't trust myself or and or Rocksmith yet. Um, we are still finding our way. Let's slow that down, then build But I like how Rocksmith um, takes a very simple set of notes. <coughs> and um, adds obviously a tempo to it, the rhythm track. Um, but also uh, makes it a little bit tricky, offbeat. It's not a straight um, changes from one chord to another. They challenge you rhythmically, whilst go, uh, taking it easy on you. Uh, you know, let's say musically. That's that's a that's an interesting uh, kind of a foundational force. Let's see if we can ace this. Oh, there we go. I missed that last one on purpose, so the, this repeats again. Let's give that another shot. Yes, please. Um, so this is really useful in syncing up your uh, visual cortex with the visual language of Rocksmith. Um, I'm finding uh, this tempo reduction. On one hand, obviously, it takes you into a muddy waters of things moving very slowly. Um, but it really helps to lock in the visuals. So I f I'm finding it very useful. And slightly annoying as well. Here's that riff again. Uh -huh. It tells you when to change. I've never noticed that before. And I wouldn't have noticed it without the slowdown. The slow tempo is really clarifying for me how the visual language of the platform uh, communicates with the user. Let's try that again at full speed. Let's 
try that again. Yeah. yeah. They're, They're going easy on, on you notes wise, wise but, but not, not rhythmically. Rhythmically, rhythmically they're, they're really challenging you. Okay, now let's put it all together in a song. Okay. Here it goes. See what I mean? Slightly behind the beat. Wow, this is so much fun. Oh, I want to do that again. <laughs> performance well whatever man i don't like you when you're cheering bro okay let's do this I'll show you what I mean that it's slightly behind the beat uh, by playing uh, on the beat this time around. See? Alright, now I'll play normal. Oh, it decreased difficulty. <laughs> I don't want difficulty decreased. All of this is fine. Let's see. Uh...
Okay, let's focus riff repeater on this part. Actually, I guess maybe this... Yeah, there we go. Listen to it one time. <clears throat> Get the uh, musical gist of it. So it's like a tempo slowdown. It's a lot, a lot of feel here. I was wondering why I was having a hard time uh, uh, getting the gist of it. Uh, the drums are doing the tom toms thing. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, that's the, that's the part that threw me off. And there's of course this repeat thing that it's doing. Without the help of the visual interface, I have no problem playing that. But uh, trying to lock in with the visual interface, I find that I lack trust in myself and it. Um, and that's the exploration that's happening right now. Finding one another. We're going to get there. Here we go. Feel. I know, I know that, that it's, it's doing, doing this. this. I know that it's doing that, but I don't see the representation in the visual interface that's telling me that uh, this note comes after this note. So that's, that's the part, part that I'm struggling with.
I see what's happening. It's this. It's both note at uh, the same time, and then this one by itself. I think. I think so. Uh, slowing it down here would be really useful, actually. So let's go down to the... Okay, so now, <coughs> this, this, this initial, initial riff, here, there's no need to uh, play, play this, this one at slow speed. Uh, uh, you you, you want to get, get this, this feel, feel. there isn't a lot of notes there. You want to get that feel uh, uh, by playing at the regular speed. speed. So let's so we'll just isolate, isolate this part right, right here. And, and I suppose 90 is fine. fine. Mm. We, we can, can eliminate, eliminate that too. too. Actually, Actually, it's, it's good for an sure. intro. This part at 90, that's fine. We'll do that one more time. <clears throat> I 
missing something. That's what I'm missing. Uh, it's not in my head. Let's let's get it in there. Telling you guys, this rocksmith thing is a miracle. It's like I want to rely on my ears, <clears throat> but I can't because there's a small delay uh, and I have to compensate for it, and that makes it difficult. I want to hear the other guitar, but uh, when I play in time, in time, uh, in quotes. I'm just going to use my ears one time. Let's try that. The accent on the second. The second is the more important one. Mm 
Try to connect the visual with the ear. Okay, okay here's what I've noticed. When you focus on the uh, score, basically, you can't keep track of the game. And I'm finding myself looking at the score. And so note to self, don't. something about this. You know, people are not going to believe me. If, if I say I'm ending the session. That's not fair. I have to go.